So uh, the only difference is that um, for us, we focus on students that are about to graduate. So I usually don't know what D-side stands for, but because it's just called D-side, but it's actually that whole thing over there that assigns for something enablement. Um, but the basic principle of it is we wanted to um, start up um, a little training program um, to sort of pass on our skills to students that are about to graduate. Um, one of the things that's very prominent here in South Africa is um, industry is complaining that they don't have skilled labor, at least in these, um, what are they called, these rising um, skills. Um, so such as data science or machine learning or AI or predictive modeling um, and stuff like that. And actually, I think data science skills are a shortage um, the world over. So given that we have a double-edged sword of a situation here in South Africa, well, we have skills shortage and very high unemployment. Uh, it just was a highlight that there is some kind of a mismatch. So this project um, is actually designed, once again, uh, to try and bridge that gap. And so we take, uh, over the years, the numbers have changed, and there'll be a, a little graph to show that. But we take um, fourth year and first year uh, postgraduate students, and they come and they work with us uh, for four weeks in the winter. So that will be June, July, and then eight weeks in the summer, December, January. Um, and they come and they actually a lot of time come and work on our own projects. Um, and by our own projects, I mean our own actual assignments that we as CSIR researchers would, um, would look at. So the whole point is this project it needs to be uh, mentor guided. It's a learn by doing and you need to be solving a real world problem that has a real client. Um, the reason for the mentor is that it is very, very, very intensive, very intensive. And sometimes the students say we do not communicate that effectively. Um, we try, but I think it's difficult to communicate it effectively. Once again, as Bruce said, this is um, a collaborative project between us in the modeling and digital sciences um, and uh, Miraka. So we've got two senior researchers from Miraka, and actually Miraka has given us their SRM, which is the biggest researcher in the unit. Uh, but anyway, we've got two of those, we've got two senior researchers from the modeling and digital sciences, and then we've got a project manager who's an actual Miraka project manager, and he's taking out his time to run this project. The project is funded by um, DST, and little contributions from the CSIR in the form of hours, uh, research hours, which I think anyone that has ever contracted the CSIR knows this can be quite pricey, unfortunately. Um, so these are um, the numbers, basically. Um, this project started in 2004, 2005, so that would have been June 2004. We had 10 students, then they moved to 33 last year. We had 51, and we are actually going to stop it at 50 because given the rigor of the program, it, it is an overload. Even we don't sleep in the students around. No one, no one gets to sleep over Christmas, which is a shame. Everybody is out on the beach in South Africa, and we are here. Um, but um, the students are recruited from a variety of the South African universities. We try to get a good mix. Um, and the reason for that is they come and they work in groups. And we are hoping some of the stuff that each student knows based on their background comes and rubs off on the other students. We get some very interesting groups. Um, also, the background of the students, we get them from a variety of disciplines. Um, of course, majority of our students are going to come from the computing and engineering, um, but we get a lot of statisticians, and actually, funny enough, uh, in time we've realized that statisticians are best. So if there's any statisticians in this room, kudos to you guys. Um, they are really good, the students that come in with a statistic background, 
they are malleable, which is exactly what we need. Because sometimes when somebody already comes in with their background in programming and they do things the way they were doing them, and I think as the last speaker just mentioned, sometimes I don't think the patterns of programming as as well ingrained. So first you've got to rub off all of that and restart. Um, so, but then you know, statisticians come in with the ability to model phenomena, and then we input the programming on top and really able to run off. Um, but some other that have been very interesting for us are, for example, journalism students. There is a big push now with data-driven journalism. Um, we have huge companies that do lots of uh, documentaries um, that rely on you having researched and verified your data. Um, and so we get some of those. We are looking also to talk to uh, political science students, economic students, obviously somebody with a background in econometrics is natural in this space. Um, so we're just looking to get a bit of a mix. And we always get one or two graphic designer because like I said, at the end, we need to provide a real project, product that we can give to a client. So once again, um, the projects span very large. We actually send out a call to the CSIR and to industry in South Africa as well as government. So like last year, we had clients uh, from uh, like take a lot from government departments, uh, water and sanitation from departments inside CSIR, like the defense team here at CSIR had a project. Uh, so we haven't actually gotten a project from a university. That would be interesting. Um, but I, this is a really great way for somebody who just has a data set or a problem to push it to us. We do it, we solve it. And for that part of the project, it's free. Um, and so you as a client, this is me doing your call out to some of you, if you have got interesting data sets, you can just submit them to us or we can collaborate um, because we really will try to solve the problem that you're trying to solve. Um, so um, we have had projects, we've got geospatial modeling, that's very big in Miraka and the Miraka researchers there have are leading that part, which we love. Um, we have projects on predictive policing, uh, resource allocation. Um, so we look at all kinds of data. Obviously, for geospatial, you're looking at spatial data. Uh, we look at tweets. We look at social media data. Uh, we look at numerical data. We just look at whatever images. We also have a researcher whose uh, primary area is in image processing. Um, and so we also look at how to model uh, like computer vision, so projects that are on computer vision. The process usually starts off with us. This is already me, part of the process, soliciting projects. And a huge chunk of project planning, because once again, I say we're very ambitious and we've learned that without thoroughly planning every part of that project, there's so much frustration because we're getting students that don't know much about data science. And so for them to come and stumble about things that we know for granted, take for granted that you just have to struggle with this problem, it's very frustrating for them. So we actually have to iron out a lot of this stuff before they come through. Um, then they, on the other side, have to come, have to prep. Uh, a bit on web development, a bit on Python. These are the stuff that we're not going to teach them. Uh, we are going to expect them to learn in the first week, so it's better that they are prepped before. Um, then we run workshops uh, on, on exploratory uh, data analysis, um, on machine learning, uh, and then we also teach them a little bit on the principles of software development. The reason we have actually added that, um, that software development is because sometimes the clients want to take the project, and if that code is written very poorly, it's very difficult for us to take it forward. And so we've decided to also uh, get them to walk this path. Um, the experiences that uh, we have had here, um, and mostly they've been really positive. The only negative, actually, I really think is just that we just get really tired and the December holidays are really short. Uh, but it's a very fulfilling project. Um, we get lots of students appreciating the teamwork, the challenge, 
Um, we get two times uh, during the session to showcase the projects to the, our, our stakeholders, and we usually get very positive feedback. So uh, that's been very helpful. And like I said, for us, it allows us to take more riskier projects, projects that maybe we could not um, justify to our managers we are able to do through this, this thing. Um, I had uh, a little bit, as I, and I might actually but uh, just run over this. Um, but anyway, technical skills, this is actually words that I took from one of the evaluation back. Uh, but what happens is actually a lot of these kids, by the time they go back, they can actually really build this thing. They, they really do. A lot of the time, uh, they, we, they sit in that lab all by themselves, and they get to sort it out. Um, so we teach them techniques of programming. Um, they also do a lot of presentation, and so that's why that comment would be there on communication and having to work in a team. Uh, and they, 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 they present to, once again, the stakeholders, they present to the Department of Science and, 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 and Technology. I, I don't know why I'm thinking telecommunications. <laughs> um, uh, and then, of course, at the end, we also teach them a lot about these tools that are used for data science. The reason for that, once again, is so that we bridge this research and industry, because industry uses these tools. Uh, and exactly then, so the tools we look at, um, we've got a couple here. So these, these would be our, our collaboration tools. Um, these are uh, analyzing a lot of uh, text analysis. Um, and then over there is the Python stack that we use. Um, so we've got about three, uh, three types uh, uh, of tools that we use. These tools were specifically chosen once again because this is what industry uses. Um, and then finally, we also use, in line with industry, we use Hadoop and Spark and Cassandra. So this is for data management. This is also data management, but obviously you can then build in some uh, map reduce on top of your Hadoop structure, and that's computational. Um, Spark, Storm, just help you parallelize everything. And then, of course, Spark allows you uh, to run um, your algorithms really quickly um, because you just have, once again, a lot of RAM. That's why I was asking you about that question because RAM just means your computer is nice and chubby and so can do more. Um, and then uh, now we might also start looking at TensorFlow. Now this is the area of deep learning uh, for areas like banking and um, retail. If a student, so we actually have one of our students uh, recruited by Amazon. And so you imagine if you're going to go and work at Amazon, it would be actually really good to also come in with some background in TensorFlow. Everything is automated for us. So we've got uh, Ambari and Airflow. Airflow is the thing that makes all the machines run, and then Ambari is the thing that installs all the machines. So everything, we try to automate as much as possible. This infrastructure exists. Um, I do think this is my last slide. Yeah, it could be my last slide. It doesn't. Uh, this one is just a, a little conclusion. Um, but that, that infrastructure exists for us, and it's open to anyone at the CSIR. And we usually have it also available to other researchers that want to collaborate with us. We heavily work with vets. Um, we have some relationship with University of Pretoria. Um, but we are always really open, and I think especially to colleagues that are also on the African continent. Um, actually, this year we had one colleague who also worked in social media that we contacted all the time, and he's situated in Kenya. Uh, and he had already done quite a bit of the work, so he provided us with very, very good tips. Um, and so it's, it's an open program. It's HCD. Um, and so the more we can collaborate, the better. Um, so you can get in touch with me. That's my email address. Um, and please submit a challenge um, and spread the word. Right now, because this is a DST program, I do not know if it is open to universities outside South Africa. But for all researchers in South Africa, please spread the word. And you can find us here on D-Side Web. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's D-Side. Thank you.